That's an interesting comment. The choice options divide a community. There's a good question about civilian personnel from Facebook. I like more assistance from civilian personnel. When I first moved here, I went to talk to them to see if I had any options for finding a GS position on base. I moved here after my husband was already stationed here, so I don't have the option of using the priority placement program, and I don't get spouse preference. I came from a GS-12 in contracting and have been trying for over a year and a half now to get a GS position on base with no luck. I thought the civilian personnel was supposed to help in areas of employment with GS positions. Major Duke, what's up your alley? Yes, sir. Unfortunately, because you were married on en route here, you're not part of the priority placement, and that's unfortunate, and I'm sorry for whoever that is. But I would very much like to know who you are so I can try to assist. We do have assistance through, um, I know you're GS, but uh, there's our human resources through our NAF employees. We have uh, positions available there, and the Airman Family Readiness Center also assists with resume writing to assist Perhaps we're not filling out that application correctly online. I know it's pretty, it's, it's, it's not user friendly, and I know that on USA Jobs as well as our, our NAF HRO, but it is the system that we are required to use. So we have tricks that we can help you learn so that you can put the right words in there to get the job that you deserve. Good deal. Thanks, Tamara. All right, was there anything else that I should address up there for education? Six houses in a row with middle schoolers, six different middle schools. We know about choice, and it does divide the community. I've got to say the choice issue is that we depend on the local school district. We're one of 168 public schools left on a military base anywhere in the world, so, and that's what Tinker is. And it, Tinker builds the community here on the installation. But when it comes to choice, this area is just so large, and there are so many municipalities out there, there's nine, you know, Clearwater, St. Pete, Brandon, Valrico, Fishhawk, all of those. So the state of Florida and Hillsborough County both support school choice. It's really nothing that the military can weigh in on. It's, it's one of the options parents have. I don't know if I'm addressing the main concern there, but if I'm not, please tell me if there's something I can address. Boss, if I could just do, have one comment there. I think what yeah. she's probably getting at is, is the fact that uh, and it's what we're addressing with Tinker K through eight. The whole idea is to build that military community. Woo. Build a military community um, here at Tinker, and also with the Monroe option, fewer families will have to uh, do the school choice options throughout the district. That's the whole idea. Hopefully, that addresses what what that question's getting to. Good deal. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Anything else on education before we leave that one? We're approaching the end of our hour here. All right. Hey, sir, can I do a re-attack? You bet. So with regard to the MyCare page, it's not on the Facebook Six Medical Group page. It's on the Six Medical Group page that hangs off of the uh, Air Force page, the, the, six, the uh, McDill page. It's not the Facebook page. Good deal. Thanks, Kevin. All right, so this is one of our catch-alls here. You need to know, and I want my voice to be heard on, so any issue at all, type as much as you like. We'll, uh, we'll get you a response one way or the other. Is there anything on Facebook that we should answer that's popped up? Good deal. Thanks. Anything else while we're waiting for responses to come in here? Any questions in the room? Yes, ma'am. Um, I have a question about Boy Scouts. In, at other bases, we were able to sell popcorn on base for one day during the CFC, and I was wondering if that was something that could be revisited here. This was an Army base, so I don't know if, it was, if it's an Air Force-specific regulation or if we need to wait until after the CFC. Okay, that is a great question. We'll take that down, Sir? and we'll go. Uh, I've, I was looking for my lawyer, but he's not here tonight. So I know during CFC there's a restriction on fundraisers. Right. You can't have golf tournaments, all that sort of stuff. But uh, there might be some connection. If it was permitted on an Army installation or somewhere else, there's a great likelihood we'll be able to crack that nut and figure out something here. All right. We'll take that one back to Chris Brown. Anything else? All right. This is great. There's nothing else that we need. Oh. <laughs> 
Mill spouse employment, better communication between base and community resources. So yeah, I'll talk about that for a little bit. So I've met a couple of the folks in the, the greater Tampa Chamber of Commerce and other places around town and every downtown organization here, and there are a lot of towns, like I said, there's at least nine municipalities, they want to help military families. Their question to me is always, how can we plug in? How can we get engaged? And my answer back is always, I appreciate the outstretched hand. Thank you for taking care of our military members, but it can all go through myself and Chief Lusson here. How do I plug you community members, you benevolent benefactors, into all of our youngest airmen, soldiers, sailors, and Marines? So I need help with that. I need ideas on how I can, when somebody offers me, hey, what can we do to help military families? You know, there are so many examples out there I could give you, but I need more. How can these folks who want to help us really reach out and help us? I need the specifics because I kind of feel like sometimes everything is going through the leadership of the main organizations on the base, and I don't think it gets distributed out to the lowest level. But there, there are ideas out there. Folks want to give every E4 and below a certain gift for Christmas. There are folks inviting airmen to Hula Bay at, at no expense to the airmen and having a huge party for them. There are more things out there to benefit our folks than, than you would imagine. I just need to figure out how we can plug folks into them better. I think Harbor Bay is doing a great job. One of you guys had your phone up. Ah, it's you right there. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's awesome. Why is it so expensive to be able to get a location for events on base for spouses? I'm not sure what that means. We will give spouses space on base to hold meetings, do key spouse meetings, whatever you guys need. And squadrons are able to set up rooms and computers and everything else for spouses in their units. So if there's a specific thing there, let me know, and we can go after it and try and fix it. Correct, b bosses, Pete. And uh, I think it's more in probably trying to, to get uh, access to uh, Surf's Edge and, 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 and have an event there that the Air, Airmark contract could be a little bit pricey to, ha to hold an event that they like to do monthly. Um, a lot of the private organizations have a hard time footing that bill, so that's something that I gotta take back as an MSG and see if we can't work through that. All right, so price is a barrier, and we're already working on that. Copy. Thanks. The ability to carry a concealed weapon on the base, I'm not, I could interpret that a couple of ways, but I'll just tell you the only folks I want carrying a weapon on the base have to be wearing a uniform, and that's to keep everybody safe. Why is Surf's Edge so expensive for the Air Force? Outrageous costs. That's to the point Colonel Santana was making. As a spouse, I worry about the adequacy of leadership within the comm squadron. I'm forced day after day to watch my husband and our friends with some issues. So the comm squadron commander's boss is here, Colonel Santana. He'll take that back and... Uh, do some investigating. McDill needs more housing, so I need, if you think McDill needs more housing, I need you to keep sending that message, especially as we have important folks visit here, like the Secretary of the Air Force, the President, the Chief of Staff, and others. Harbor Bay said they'd give me a speed limit sign months ago. When Harbor Bay doesn't follow through, who can help me? Well, in Kelly's defense, she may have run into one of the Air Force restrictions because she manages the housing, but she can't necessarily put up speed limit signs and control the regulations on the installation. So if you guys could, Pete, we, you got that? We got that one, sir. If, if, um, depending on where you want the sign, I mean, definitely uh, we just send it our way and we'll, we'll work through that, sir. Um, All right, thanks. We, we have also added throughout the neighborhood children playing signs, so we've put up some cautionary signs as well. Good deal, thanks. Why is CFC so long here? I thought it was pretty standard, the uh, time length. Is it... yeah, I think they normally give you three months uh, to execute the campaign, and normally a base will choose a certain four to six weeks to do their specific campaign. So we won't actually campaign the entire three months that CFC gives you. So if that's what you're referring to, that's the actual whole campaign itself. But normally we whittle it down to a shorter time period. Thanks, Chief. Please stop the non-residents who work at the DCC from speeding through and parking in Chevron Park. I'm guessing this is driven by the construction. The housing office has been notified, and they've referred me to security forces. I've contacted SF, but nothing's been done. This is an ongoing problem. We've got the security forces commander here, so he's hearing you loud and clear. If, if you've noticed how many speed patrols are up around Tinker Air Force Base every day, I don't think it'll be a stretch to create another one. More to follow. Feels like the medical problems here are grand. Not sure what that means. 
and you all put a band-aid on the problem, let's fix it. All right. We're working on that. You got anything you want to comment on, Kevin? Uh, absolutely, sir. Um, as you stated, we're the third largest enrolled facility. Uh, the uh, Brandon facility is actually larger than 42 other clinics. We uh, actually gained about $2.1 million in contractor support uh, for the next two years and validated our requirements to air staff. We have got, we've been able to achieve the personnel requirements. Uh, the one issue that uh, kind of goes along with another previous comment regarding Fishhawk is, is the Brandon facility. And we've actually uh, reached out utilizing the, not only the, the P4 initiatives, which are, we're working on here uh, with our community partners, but uh, have addressed it or pushing up to air staff. Yes. Um, but it's one in. It's one in. So we are, are, are engaged with, with looking for a new facility in Fishhawk as well as expanding, uh, uh, taking care of the Brandon facility. So. Thanks, Kevin. And I'll also offer up, so a big picture here, 40,000 folks enrolled in this military treatment facility. You've all heard in the news over the past year or two the possibility that TRICARE fees may go up. And when they go up, they would at least double is what I understand would be the change. So most of our efforts are geared at keeping the cost for TRICARE down. That is our HMO. So if we can do this more efficiently, it will work out better for all of us. Uh, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> So no, I won't say anything about it, but no DUI issue associated with the snowbirds. Yes, you can talk to Colonel Santa Ana after, after the meeting, just grab him. How can residents make remarks straight to the lease agreement between the Air Force and Harbor Bay? So we do have government folks who work there in the Harbor Bay office as well, but for specific lease questions, who's best to handle them? Um, the lease itself, they can address any questions with the Harbor Bay office, but the lease itself is governed by state and federal laws. Okay, thanks. Young kids are still roaming unsupervised in housing. It would be nice if the parents were held accountable. Yeah, you know, so I'll share with you our experience at Fort Bragg when Holly and I moved here. We were a little concerned to let the kids walk outside without us being some near, somewhere nearby to watch because at Fort Bragg, they'd pick them up, Child Protective Services would get involved, and the parents would be arrested for leaving a child unattended. Happened all the time, five-year-olds, seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds. This neighborhood is more what I remember growing up. Kids are running around safely, having fun, and being free. But if there is an issue with kids roaming around unsupervised, who do you think would be best to take that up? There is actually a, um, a policy out there that shows the ages of the kids and how long they can be unsupervised. So ages five and under, uh, they have to have a parent with them all the time. So you can't have a two-year-old or a three-year-old, even if it's Sophie. Um, so <laughs> if they want to talk to me about my kids, sure. Um, and then um, seven to nine, or I actually I don't really remember the, uh, the specifics of the policy, but we've actually posted it in our Harbor Blast a few times, and uh, we'll make sure to send that out again so uh, any new uh, residents who moved in will understand what the policies are. All right, thanks, Pete. Would like to see a pedestrian bicycle path through the gates. A lot of that has to do with the area just outside the gates and security. True statement. So I know a lot of folks would love to see Bayshore connect to our trail down along the waterfront, and that just due to real estate is an impossibility. You guys got any thoughts on that? Is that generally the case? Are, are we talking about the ferry, sir? No, the pedestrian bicycle path through the gates. You can walk through every gate we have, true statement. It, but it's not a, don't expect a Bayshore type of bicycle path just outside the gate. That's the city's responsibility. Yeah. All right. 